With the rapid post-war economic growth, the Takedo Main Line became noticeably short of transportation capacity. To overcome this problem, a proposal was made to convert the line to a double track, but it was obvious that the line would reach a dead end in terms of speed if it remained in narrow gauge, and a new wide gauge line proposal quickly became the most promising. The increase in the speed of railroads through electric operation is progressing worldwide, and the construction of a new electrified standard gauge line is now taking shape. A Dream Super Express was planned to connect Tokyo and Osaka in three hours at a maximum speed of 250 km per hour. The challenge was whether a high-powered locomotive or train could be realized. Assuming speeds in excess of 200 km per hour, an output of 6,000 to 10,000 kW is required, depending on the length of the train. Even at a smaller estimate of 6,000 kW, the then common 1,500 volt DC electrification would have to feed more than 4,000 amperes per train. In order to supply this large current, overhead lines and feeder lines must be thicker, and numerous substations must be installed to suppress voltage drops, which increases the cost of construction. For a train with more than 12 cars, the value is almost double this value, and the overhead wires cannot withstand such a large current. Therefore, JNR turned its attention to AC electrification, which can supply high power at high voltage and small current, and began various tests on conventional lines, as shown in other videos. There were four candidates for power control methods, a rectifying method using a mercury rectifier, a direct method using an AC commutator motor, a hydraulic method using an induction motor, and a mechanical method. When the Shinkansen project began to take shape, the direct drive system with AC commutator motors was considered the most realistic of these systems. The use of induction motors was attractive, but there were many technical unknowns in this situation where comparative tests of power transmission methods were about to be conducted on conventional lines. In contrast, since AC commutator motors were already widely used in the industrial field, their basic structure and torque characteristics are similar to those of DC motors, and they can drive vehicles without a transmission. Since characteristics similar to those of DC motors can be obtained in AC, these motors are easy to use for vehicle applications. In addition, the need for a mercury rectifier, which is troublesome to handle, is eliminated, and power losses can be reduced because control can be done by transformer tap switching instead of resistors. Although the starting tractive effort is weaker than that of the DC system, the torque drop at high speeds is small, and the superiority of the DC system for high-speed operation was highly evaluated for high-speed trains. Even if the low-speed torque was a little weak, it was considered sufficient for railcar operation, and on flat lines, it was considered fine for locomotives. Weaknesses are that AC current flows through the armature, which generates an electromotive force internally based on the same principle as a transformer, and that it contains where parts called brushes and commutator, from which electric sparks scatter and cause inductive failures. The problem of maintenance of worn parts is the same for DC machines, and electromagnetic induction disturbances are relatively small, so countermeasures were possible. The currents produced in the individual windings inside the armature are shorted by the brushes and commutator, resulting in increased heat generation and sparking. In the case of vehicle applications, heat generation countermeasures remained an even greater challenge than with DC machines, because size reduction is so important. For high-speed trains, electric brakes are important. AC regenerative braking would be ideal, but although an AC commutator motor spins on AC, the electricity it produces as a generator is DC. It was considered too cumbersome to build an inverter circuit with a mercury rectifier, and a power generating brake that converts the generated power into heat and discards it was deemed practical, so a power-to-heat conversion resistor dedicated to the brake was installed. There were two options for the formation, an all-electric 10M formation, or a 4M6T formation with high-output electric cars pulling trailers. The train output is estimated to be 10 cars with a continuous rating of 4,800 kilowatts and an hourly rating of a little over 5,000 kilowatts, much lower than the later Zero series. At the time, high-speed testing was about to begin on conventional lines, there was no knowledge of high-speed running, 
and travel resistance above 200 km per hour was still unknown. Even so, they knew that this output was not enough performance, and they assumed 150% overcurrent operation, and they thought that this overcurrent condition would be within 230 seconds of operation. In order to maintain acceleration at high speeds, the use of weak field control was also considered, as was the case with DC motors. However, since the voltage can be freely changed with AC by means of a transformer, a method to apply an even higher voltage to the motor at higher speeds was considered. Due to the capacity limitation of the transformer's primary winding, the current must be reduced when the secondary voltage is increased above the rating, but this is not a problem in the high-speed range because the motor current is already reduced. The taps that supply more voltage than the rated voltage are called over-taps, and the idea was to simplify control by eliminating resistors and control circuits for weak field control, which was later used in AC trains such as the Zero series. At this time, the Swiss lightweight car body technique was being introduced, and lightweight cars such as the Naha 10 were being manufactured one after another, incorporating this technology. Since the Takedo main line is required to transport large numbers of passengers, it is desirable to make use of the advantages of standard gauge to increase the size of the car body. Taking advantage of this lightweight vehicle technology, various ideas were proposed, and conceptual drawings of Dream Super Expresses in various forms came to the public's attention. Some proposed a stainless steel body to further reduce weight, and even a general magazine carried an image of a Dream Super Express with corrugated plates on its sides, shining in silver. Freight transport was also considered, and a huge locomotive, with a capacity of over 10 megawatts, was proposed. It was just at the time when trials of efficient freight transportation by containers were beginning, and there was a proposal to utilize 5-ton containers that were being developed for conventional lines. As on conventional lines, freight cars loaded with 5-ton containers will be connected, and a 2,000-ton container train is envisioned. To enable it to operate at more than 150 kilometers, there was a proposal for a high-powered locomotive with an output rated at 13,200 kilowatts. With 160% overcurrent startup, the starting tractive effort force reaches 61.5 tons, and the 10 per mil balancing speed is a fearsome 138 km per hour when hauling 2,000 tons. It is fun to fantasize about how such a locomotive hauled train would have run. There was also a proposal to make effective use of the locomotive by day and night by having it haul a freight train at night and a 200 km passenger train during the day. This figure shows the performance curve diagram overlaid with the running resistance on a 10 per mil climbing gradient when hauling a 2,000-ton container. On the other hand, for a 600-ton passenger train, the performance was expected to be as shown in this figure, with a balancing speed of about 220 km per hour, even at 10 per mil. In the case of container freight cars, there are numerous gaps between each container, and the effect of air resistance at speeds of 150 km per hour or more was raised as an issue. It is interesting to note that the nuclear-powered locomotive proposed by the University of Utah in the U.S. was cited as a comparison for this high-powered locomotive. The locomotive proposed by the University of Utah weighs 330 tons and has a continuous rated output of 5,222 kilowatts. As if to compete with this, the Shinkansen version weighs 260 tons and has a high rated output of 13,200 kilowatts. The number of driving axles is 12 for both, and the proposal for the Shinkansen is lightweight because there are no nuclear reactors, etc. The axle load could be kept to around 22 tons. At a time when they were seriously attempting to fly nuclear-powered airplanes, nuclear-powered locomotives were also the subject of serious research in the United States. Although Japan had considered the possibility of nuclear-powered locomotives, it did not seem to be serious about doing so. However, a 200-kilometer operation with a shaft weight of more than 20 tons requires a solid track, and a more realistic proposal was made to haul 1,500 tons at 150 kilometers on an 8-axle. Because of its low speed, it could not be used for passenger trains, which reduced the operating efficiency of the locomotive and made it uneconomical.
In the end, even if freight transportation was to be carried out on Shinkansen trains, the electric freight car method was considered to have a lighter track load and greater operational flexibility, even if the car cost was higher, and the locomotive hauled method gradually faded into the background. While the trend was toward the electric train system, Hitachi developed a prototype AC commutator motor for the Shinkansen. With a continuous rating of 170 kilowatts, it was the largest class of motor for EMUs at that time, and was ready to be used as is if a train production was decided. Although this motor was never mass-produced because the actual Shinkansen trains used silicon rectifiers for commutation, this technology was used to solve the problem of driving DC series wound motors with a pulsating current. Engineers proposed various methods and compared their feasibility and economic efficiency for this Dream Super Express, the power system of which had not yet been decided, nor even the composition of the train. It was a time when Japan had finished its post-war recovery and entered a period of rapid economic growth. With new technologies emerging one after another, it was truly a time of dreaming about the future.